Thank you very much, Sam. That's right, it's me, Jaws. I was about to say Leg Day. <laughs> me, Jaws. <laughs> it's me, Leg Day. <laughs> and Leg Day. See you guys, Hope. Versus Young and Beautiful now. I know we talked about Shadow a lot last week around, but CS Hope, realistically, they've got a lot of members on their squad that can shut them down and the numerous compositions that they've already proven to run. Absolutely. If we go to Ruins, I think it may well be the Kenzie show, the uh, undoubtedly the best widow in the, uh, in the lobby, I imagine. Want to see what he can do there. Then it goes down to his other DPS. Can Unfixed pick up a Tracer if that's going to be the case? Because that's usually Kenzie's domain as well. Yeah, Kenzie also runs the uh, Roadhog too. There's a lot of, uh, mul there's a mul it's a multi facet team in the way that they can both opt to triple tank, quad tank, like they were mentioning on the desk. They can also do the classic dive. We're going to start on our way to Lighthouse to first up. Young and beautiful though, Emil. Pretty scary on the Diva too. It's whether he can actually deal with Chow's really hyper aggression play style coming out from his Diva. Yeah, I imagine if Emil can hang back, try and take advantage of the Discord Orbs coming out from Ding, they may well be able to punish Chow quite effectively as we move in here. Of course, Sharik will be at Chow's back as well if they make those cohesive dives, which we know CIS Hope can do there. One of the teams that are definitely some of the best when it comes to coordinating those dives, all going in together as opposed to maybe what we talk about like Mosaic. We sometimes see Christopher going in alone without Danny. You rarely see that on at CIS Hope. Does it like Unfix is going to be taking to the skies on the Pharah here? The question is, will Young and Beautiful, will they have an answer as we come out of the gate or will they have to adapt towards the end and try and take out Unfixed? If Unfixed isn't like answered directly, he's going to do a lot of damage to the tank line of Young and Beautiful. Ben Best and Emil, they're going to suffer. Yeah, and speaking of coming out of the gate already, Shadow's actually hovering the Soldier. A couple of seconds left. Can't imagine he'll change it up just yet. So already they've kind of got that answer. They know Unfix is a big, big Farah player. And Farah's love this map. We just saw it last series. I know you just mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. Unfix might have a little bit of a problem here because realistically, Main's going to stick on him. And Eng, if he's not careful, he's going to get picked off by Dempsey. He's a wonder at getting on the back line. They do go for a small dive to start off with, though. Shaq actually moves forward, kills good stuff straight up. Shadow's going extremely low. Managing to peel back. Dempsey's in the front line right now, just trying to peel for the rest of his team by doing as much damage to the back line as possible. Kenzie not willing to just push forward just yet. Rockets rain down from above. Young and Beautiful this time around are going to have to back off. Emil and Dempsey there, they really did try their best to take care of Sharik, and to their credit, they did so. They ramped back around and took care of the entrenched gorilla that was in their midline. However, Gustav was the first to go down. Great target coordination from CIS Hope meant that they were lacking that big source of healing straight away, and that meant Shatter, his damage boost wasn't there and he was going to have a long time to take out Unfix. It was going to take quite a bit of effort. Sharik and Chow both have the high ground here, denying it from Shadow, although he's already built himself up towards that tactical visor. He's on 95% already. Quicker than Unfix, that is, but Chow Great already dive. takes out Ben Best. Extremely deep dive and just got uh, punished for it. That visor's still available, but you've got to be careful. You haven't got the backup of your Winston, so it's probably best you just back off for the time being. Very conservative to start the match off, but that does mean Unfix now has that rocket barrage. Not a great dive there from Ben Best. You can see from his ultimate charge, he's been doing quite a bit of damage. However, Emil wasn't there with him when he made that particular dive. He was pretty low on health. Probably should have communicated better to Gustav and Emil exactly what he wanted to do. Now, Unfix has got a long sight line. He can lay down a barrage. He's already used his mobility. Where's he going to put oh, it? Oh, there's the tactical visor. Unfix gets clean kick. Um, <laughs> Picked clean straight out of the air. Ding ends up finding the kill. Sounds struck in the middle of it all, but Chow ends up getting out of the mech instantly and gets dropped for it. Shadow Point Sharik too. <laughs> He's job, on the man. wrong side of the map and main ends up cleaning him up. Kenzie Girl finds the pulse bomb onto the Winston, but doesn't quite actually find the kill. Meanwhile, the young beautiful just contested in the point. Hope we're nowhere near it, and they do manage to secure it and flip it around. Not a particular fan of that soundbar. I think it probably could have been done without it. Just out being chased out of dodge and quickly. Young and Beautiful, just as quickly as they got the point, CIS yeah, so Hope will be reclaiming it. They're not going to allow Young and Beautiful to encroach on their territory for long. However, there are tools in the box for the Young and Beautiful side. The Transcendence is going to be there. That could be used against Unfixed Barrage, but Unfixed Barrage does around 4,000 damage. If you can get close enough, it may not be enough. Well, Transcendence is going to be popped really early from Ding. There's Unfixed. He finds Shadow for the time being. Doesn't find anybody else, but it doesn't look like he actually needs it. Shaq finds himself discorded. He should be able to, be able to leap out of the way, at least for the time being. Self-destruct goes off, kills Chow. Although, big stick, big oh, kill, big Ding and Gustav go down. 92% and ticking. Young and Beautiful are going to have to pull something out of the bag and they're going to have to pull out first. We're going to have to pull out with no healing as well. They go the tanks desperate to get in and cause overtime. Overtime ticks through. The bar's going to be moving down as Chow ends up falling to Aang. It's going to tick through. 11% to 99. CIS Hope. They find Lighthouse. Oh, that's the dominance we've come to expect from CIS Hope and they are starting off strong here. Only for going 11% of the young and beautiful side. Plucky and they've had their moments, but not ideal. And obviously, 
little bit lacking coordination there potentially, trying to get away from each other when they were stuck by Kenzie, but losing both your supports going into the final fight. I say it all the time, damage taken is permanent. And on Lighthouse, it's uh, pretty hard to access those health packs unless you happen to be a tracer. So, it wasn't great for them going in. Emil, Ben Best, all the damage they took wasn't going to be healed up and they were cut down pretty quickly. But now we're going over to the well. We're not going to be seeing Ruins if CIS Hope can bring this one out. So we may not see Kenzie's Widow. But Unfix looks like he's going to be pretty happy to stay on the Pharah. Shadow 2K is going to meet him in the air. We're in for a dogfight, Jaws. Yep, Ding, hop it over to the Mercy to round out the double pharmacy comps. Classic dive for the rest of both sides. I was kind of hoping to see a Roadhog. I like Kenzie's, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Sharak and Chow, wow, Kenzie and Aang position. are doing an extremely aggressive push up onto the high ground here. They are going to get pummeled from above, but the problem is, so is Young and Beautiful if they do uh, forego this high ground. Unfix doing a good job of just making sure they pop the bubble, bubble early so Ben Best takes the most damage possible. Emil used his cooldown there and then straight away leaping away was Ben Best so he couldn't be joined by his D.Va and now Chow and Kenzie trying to brawl out on the ground and Unfix has his eye on many targets. Yeah, there's nothing to take him out of the sky right now. Shadow can't really duel him because he has to deal with the own threats on the ground. Point does go over and Hope will reclaim it, or I should say just take it. They haven't actually uh, let him reviewed full touch it just yet. But if you look at the ultimate economy already, Unfix not looking so healthy on his rocket barrage. Shadow's nearing that 90% mark. You can tell where his prioritization is really lie. Just pummeling the front line, squishing them up, just making sure Dempsey can follow up. Though another telling difference is Chow and Emil. Their ultimate charges. Chow's evidently be getting a lot more damage down onto his opposing tanks, whereas Emil's been more preoccupied with Unfixed in the air. Yeah, main activates that Valkyrie. There's Shadow goes straight on top of Sharik's head. He does get taken out by Chow, but it's a one for one trade for the time being. Chow very, very low, has to back out of the point. They're still in control, and with five members on it, Ding's in a lot of trouble too. He's in a very tight spot, ends up just wheezing out of there. Does fly away. There's the self destruct from Chow. He's going to be able to remake almost. That barbell actually from Sharik saved his life in the end, stopped a lot of that damage actually going through already. Still contesting. It looked like a very aggressive attack from Chow, but really it was all to try and deny the res coming out from Ding. And oh, okay, oh. unfixed in the air. Nasty. Double kill coming out from unfixed. Emil tries his best to remake. Triple kill, and the self destruct actually kills Chow's mech. He is going to go for the full reset here. Chow, one HP. Uh, he's happy. <laughs> Does have the man advantage. Chow, he's going to die. Right, there Chow, we go. Oh. Oh, Sharik's in a bad position. Now you, maybe he's going to hunt him down. Rez is going to be there. He could be caught out. Although, I'm fixing that with his rocket barrage in a tight corridor. That's not where <laughs> you want to be. It's a good shield. If I will be your shield if it's made of rockets, that's going to be pretty dangerous to move in on. But now he's got to pick his target. He doesn't want the other Farah to be around when he uses it. Ding's already going low. Oh, I got jumped up by Sharik. Beautiful coordination from Unfix and Sharik. Even Chow taking out Shadow in midair. Rocket barrage being used there by Unfix. I'm not sure that was actually necessary, but still 90% on the clock. They've got that primary race to stall out. They've even got the survivability from the Valkyrie. Emergency swap here. Shadow 2K moving over to the Sombra for the final fight. They have six seconds to touch the point. Main's going to be ready to receive. A Valkyrie can be in play in Sharik. He's feeling angry, Jaws. He's going straight in on the back line. Primary race has been popped, but Ben Best is already on the point. The sound barrier is going to give a nice chunk of health bar. Two good staff and Ben Best, but that's the only targets it actually hits. They go up in the air, still contesting. Kenzie's on the back line now. A big, big kill. Dempsey, I believe he just killed himself with his own pulse bomb. Unfix finds the neck onto Emil as well. Kenzie just being an absolute pest in the back line. Shadow finally finds the kill, but is it going to be enough? Overtime's still ticking down. Eng finds his way onto Shadow and stopping those hacks going through as well. Chow's been so good at it thus far. Big EMP in the skies. Oh, Main ends up falling. Well. Chow goes as well. Shadow's being chased up by the monkey, but Sharik is so low. No heals, and Dempsey ends up finishing off the kill. Eng just trying to buy as much time as he possibly can, but Dempsey cleans up the point and gets the recap. Oh, just about there. That was really on a knife set, Young and Beautiful. I wish Gustav would have got a boop onto main when he was trying to res up Sharik. That could have meant the uh, Winston wasn't back in the fight for a longer while. However, CIS Hope, they're not going to be feeling too bad about that. They've got 99% and now they can play the Alt Economy game. A couple of seconds and they'll have five ultimates at their disposal with the exception of a Valkyrie. Emil there keeping Ben Best nice and safe, but down goes to a Defense Matrix and now it's time for CIS Hope to make their attack. Ding is so low. That Pulse Bomb just got... E oh no, it didn't get in. Just completely missed. Kenzie will ignore that one, buddy. Don't worry. They're going to try and find Emil. They find his mech in the end after the self-destruct, but he does get the full remake. Dempsey dies to his own self-destruct. 
of Chow, and Emil actually takes out Shaq, went a little bit too aggressive. Still willing to fight the point here. Unfix has Rocket Barrage, but from is right now, hasn't really got a front line to work with, and he doesn't have a mercy anymore as Ben Bess does manage to find the back of the monkey hand. You, you, you could see what he was weighing up doing the, uh, doing the rocket boost there to try and say, I was like, ah, oh, I've only got 45 health, but we'll leave him with five, and that may well get taken out. You've got to not die. You've got to keep those Winston Labs stats nice and padded. But Dempsey, he's going to be ready to try and shut down this push before it happens, Jaws. He's got a pulse storm in his back pocket. He's been saving it for a rainy day. And now Young and Beautiful, they're up against the wall. It needs to be absolute perfection here, or they will lose out on Ilios. Unfix is on the soldier now as well, so really switching off of the Farah. That was very, very close. Ding, coalescence across the point. It's keeping his tanks alive. Ben Beth has to leap out, though, as Unfix is going to get a big, big sightline. Two beats have been dropped. The young people will find the five-man beat and the big EMP to strip those away. That's going to be perfect. Shadow finds May. No shields, no problem. Shao finds one on Ben Beth, but realistically, Kenzie's going to have to make his quick escape, the quick getaway. He's going to find the big health back too, but not for before he watches Chow die right in front of his eyes. Perfect timing there from Shadow2K. As you said, stripping away the sand barrier. They had to wait, and now Aang is having to go over to the Mercy. He wants to keep unfixed. Nice and boosted up. However, CIS Hope now there on the knife edge. 97% for Young and Beautiful. This is where it all comes down to. They turn it completely around, and now overtime is ticking through. Shao's trying to move in. The tanks have just completely dove and destroyed Maiden and Kenzie. There was nowhere to room in that tiny room. A trash compactor, as Trude would once say. Dempsey and Dean, they're on the scoreboard. It's Looking bright red. Sharik ends up going down. The self destruct will come through. Ben Bess hiding in his shield. Chow only finds one. It ticks over. Well's going to get completed. Now we're going to go to ruins. Oh, Desert Choose a very happy man because you know what this means, Jaws? It may well mean Kinsey coming out with a Widowmaker, but we'll have to see what they decide to do. Do they want to put their second DPS unfixed onto the Trace or maybe they want to run like a Widowmaker Genji? Who knows? It's all down to uh, trying to surprise Young and Beautiful here, who look like Shadow may well stick with the Sombra, and that's not too bad here. We have seen Sombra use less successfully with a solo tank, but here, Emil and Ben Best going to be keeping up with the duo. It was really in week one where we saw the Sombra popularity on Ruins. Yeah, mostly from Angry Titans. They Elever. moved to the left-hand side of the map, if you're on the red side, obviously. If you're on the other side, it's the other side of the map. If you get your left and right, it's confused. <laughs> I'm just making, making sure I clear it up. But Make they have that hand. big health pack, and there's no wow. way the enemy team can actually fight you over that because you have the health advantage. Like you were saying, it's actually more health than a Mercy gives you over that time. This time around, though, CS Hope, they're going for a triple tank comp instead. Kenzie popped on that rope. And Young and Beautiful here, they have forgone the main health pack to begin with. I wonder who has got the hack there. Oh, Ben Best, he's making sure that he's going to take a lot of damage. He is very low, needs to go. Chow's going to try hunt him down. He's on the edge of his seat. <laughs> Kenzie with the cross map hook. He even finds another one. Dempsey ends up going down for Unfix. It. Yeah, he was going to save his tank. <laughs> it's OK, don't worry. I got you, buddy. Making I'll sure that Emil didn't get staggered. Great team play there from Dempsey. But unfortunately, Sayas so will be walking away with a first cat beer. And now Sharrett can post up on top of his high ground. We talked before about how Kenzie's he's a bit of a high ground. He's a sniper roadhog. He loves playing around that and abusing those sight lines. Question is, where can Ben Best make an incision here to try and get some damage? Oh, okay. I'm not sure he can. I'm going to be honest with you. He's already out of play. Does use the bubble and the leap. Shadow finds the hack, or at least tried to on Sharik, but Chow, just so good at keeping track right now of Shadow and those hacks. You touch her, you interrupt that hack, that's it, gone. You can see that Sharik's also got great map awareness. He can backtrack his way up onto this high ground. Oh, he's been hacked, though. He's going to be a big target. Down he goes. Sharik goes down to Dempsey. No shield. And that's a free lot of damage. Shadow going extremely low. Kenzie extremely accurate with the right clicks, but he's going to get focused down now. He's got a Discord orb on him. Pulse bomb as well. Oh, Just Dempsey a second time. Game. But Dempsey two times in a row. Not the himself the performance he wants with his pulse bomb. EMP lands on Kenzie, but that's going to be the only target. Unfix actually goes down to the uh, EMP also. I misspeak for half a second. Shatter takes a large, large shot of the uh, scrap to the face. But ends up surviving. Gustav actually finishes up the kill regardless. Kenzie actually opening up a whole hog as well to try and push everybody back from the point. Still 60% and counting. Another hook lands. This guy's hook percentage was just. It's astronomical. And importantly, during this, despite great flashes of brilliance from Young and Beautiful, CIS Hope, they never lost control of a point, and now they're on 70%. Young and Beautiful, they have one attack, maybe two, to try and bring this one out. They do have a self-destruct, but it's not going to be very useful unless they can get rid of Sharik's shield. Well, Unfix is going to have to time this one to an absolute T. Gustav has the sound barrier. They managed to strip that one away. It's going to be an easy fight for them. Ben Best, make sure he can get onto that point before he can contest. 
It is 90% after all. Sharik in a lot of trouble. There goes the self-destruct. Everybody dodges out of the way for the time being, so Emil just using that one as a zoning tool. A big hack. Dempsey's in a lot of trouble. That sound barrier keep him alive. The shot definitely won't. No, three. Man coming through for Sharik. He ends up pinning one, and Eng finishes off the rest. Oh dear, Primal Wage Winter, not today. Even gets a flame strike onto a meal. The time kicks over 99% to zero. CIS hope they end up taking Helios. Indeed, it was looking close, but then Ruins came, Jaws, and uh, you can't really stand up to the CIS Hope Triple Tank. It's just so hard to break, especially with Benbest having to make some sort of solo engagements there, trying to move in onto Sharik. And to his credit, he was doing what he needed to. He made Sharik turn around, he made Sharik lose his positioning to come in and hit him with the hammer. And that's when the hacks came through onto Sharik, and occasionally they would get the kill. But the second time around, they knew exactly what to do. Eng turned on the speed boost, got Sharik into that background, and that meant he was a little bit more safe. This is what we were talking about before, the multi-facet and the extraordinary amount of compositions that uh, CIS Hope can run. That Roadhog from Kenzie, it's pretty scary. Very scary. Tell you what is pretty scary, not seeing our face for a couple of minutes. We're going to jump to a quick break. We'll be back after these. Hey guys, welcome back. Game number two coming up very, very shortly. It's either going to be Hollywood or Numbani, but we just saw CIS Hope take their first game of Young and Beautiful. And uh, I think we're probably going to be going to Numbani here, especially if, as it's Young and Beautiful's choice. On the well, we saw pretty good predilection towards uh, the dive comps when it comes down to facing off against the triple tank, which you can see on the first point of Hollywood didn't really go the way of Young and Beautiful at all. Yeah, no, they it, no, it did not. So, yep. Yeah. Not too much of a surprise. We're going to see Numbani. Does open up a lot of Farah play too, so we can't uh, we can't give that one a miss. However, Sombra, so so on this point. I think uh, Shadow and Unfix are probably going to steer clear of that. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. There's, there's some health packs you can hack, but the problem is they're a little bit too far away more often than not. So Farah is definitely going to be the a DPS of choice, I can imagine, or just classic dive. We've seen Shadow's Genji, and if they pump all the resources into him like they have done last week, or oh, not last week, it will be a couple of days ago. Um, <laughs> He really does start to come alive. Technically last week in the standings, but Technically. okay. But I do think this does really go into Young Beautiful's wheelhouse. You can bring out Shadows Genji, as you said before, and Dempsey can come in on that tracer should it be required. CIS Hope are going to be starting off in the blue on the defense. I wonder if we are going to see Kenzie stick with his Widowmaker. We've seen it sometimes before from um, Mosaic Fisher. Some good relocations on his point to try and defend here with the Widow. It's really good against incoming Farah's. Question is... Are they going to be dealing with one of those? Likely Shadow's going to be moving over to the Genji. But something you have ignored, Leg Day. Eng's Torb. <laughs> we can't forget about uh, Eng's Torb. The big Eng Torb. Oh, yes. That's why they want to go on the defense first. Just show them what the Torb's made of. Uh, hope, hopefully Eng won't be baited in by Kodak's former glory with the hammer kill. 
No one's going to body block the building of turrets. Kenzie throwing himself off the edge there, just making sure. A little bit of psychological warfare before we begin. However, Sharik and Shav are going to be sticking on these two, the two vertical tanks. We call them dive tanks for Winston and the Diva. is going to mean that they can relocate from low to high ground in but an instant. Great for the counter dives when people come in onto your more squishy targets like your Torbjorn. And, uh, well, actually, pretty much like the Torbjorn, unfixed the main, they're going to be up in the air. It's going to be very hard to dive them. Yeah, the beautiful thing about having this uh, s more spread out composition in the way CIS Hope are actually running this is that Matt, that main has so many outs. He can fire up in the air to firm fix. He He's can jump over to Chow. He's going. He can jump over to Eng, who's going to be near his turret as well. And obviously, Kenzie, if he's darting around in sight too, he can also fly to him. So realistically, he's going to be incredibly hard to lock down. And you've got to see what Young and Beautiful are going to come out the gate here with, because we've just seen their classic dive, and it makes more sense to run with that. But you got to pin down these compositions. You really have to tunnel and focus on one person because that, if not, that turret is going to rip you to pieces. Absolutely, and tunneling on one person can be good here because main is the only healing available for the side of CIS Hope. If they start to take a little bit too much damage, it will be incredibly difficult to get it healed up. Down goes the turret already, potentially Shadow's throwing in those damage with the shurikens, but he has to get rid of Chow first right in his face. I don't think he actually finished off the turret. I'm not entirely sure. It didn't actually come up with the kill fee, but Gustav already pays the price with his life. Shark tends to take him out. Ben Best coming extremely low as well. Even Shatter taking a beating. Does manage to get the reflect off in time. And Kenzie, 6 HP. Doesn't manage to get out alive. Dempsey pays him a visit. And there'll be Shatter backing off as well. But for the time being, they can just wait for the respawns. They are barely close in this instance. Ding. Not anymore. Ding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A little bit too far up there, buddy. Yeah. Ding taking a little bit of an alternate route, trying to get the drop on maybe Aang. However, that is going to mean that there is no longer a spawn advantage. No, nope, Ding's back. So, Young and Beautiful, they have a slight window here before Kenzie gets back. But look, Kenzie has been given the armor. He's now got 225 HP. He's going to feel a little bit more confident about running around and getting into the back lines. Winston's trade places, nothing really came of that. The old switcheroo. Gave him the high five in midair, but that was really about it. Already Kenzie finds Sting in the back line, so already Young and Beautiful, a man down, a healer down too, and in fact a DPS down, apparently he can 2v1. <laughs> no no Zens to take you out today, Kenzie. Well, Kenzie's generally going to win every single Tracer the while he's got armor, because the armor is incredibly effective against the small arms fire that comes from the Pulse Pistols that will only do half damage towards that armor. That means that... It's going to be Dempsey who's going to try and avoid those doors, but Kenzie's going to be pressing the issue. Eng isn't that, uh, isn't that uh, close, really, towards the Molten Core, but he's got some time to build it up and unfixed. Still being that a uh, little bit of a threat in the back line, but the Farah coming in from above, doing a lot of damage towards these tanks, making sure that Young and Beautiful are having trouble with those tank doors. Rather surprised. Eng's actually... One of the only ones that hasn't really got his ultimate online. 70% to go. Shadow has that blade, although he needs to make a hell of a dash. Main's going to activate the ultimate as well. He's trapped in a room. Shadow swinging a miss. Chow just send out the self shot. Kills Ben Bess. And Eng's turret ends up going down as well. So Eng's going to have to get that online ASAP in order to build up that molten core. Ben Bess gets revived in the middle of it all. Eng ends up taking out Ding. Once again, a slow stagger here. You can see how gr aggressive Sharrett can be as he's got Main to back him up. They do go for the re engage here, but instantly. Ben Best is pushed off the high ground. Ben Best looking for a leap here. He's getting incredibly deep in, but he has been targeted by the turret, making the leap across there, making sure he's not going to be staying in that sight line. Molten Core has been unlocked and even unfixed, jumping over to the Farah. Has that Rocket Barrage already available? No one to really deal with him. Everybody's in a tight corridor now. There's no escaping. You walk into Sharik, the beefy, beefy Winston, or you walk into the Rockets of Unfixed. They chose neither. They ended up dying altogether. Young and Beautiful, get a quick reset. A little bit of throwback analysis for you here. You can see just how valuable that Torbjorn is during, Im uh, during Shadow's last blade. He managed to get a nice slash damage boosted and the dash through onto main, but main had the extra 75 HP, was able to survive what would have been an instant kill and keep his team well healed up, keep that Valkyrie in play. That's where the Torbjorn really comes into his own. Everyone's got some extra armor now. It's going to be incredibly hard to get rid of these heroes. Unfix takes a couple of dings on the head, but it was merely glancing blows as main does heal him up again. The Valkyrie's going to get unleashed and Kenzie finds the Pulse Bomb onto Ben Bear. Samir's going to get demecked as well. Nothing really to deal with Unfix when he's in this position. Shadow is trying to get his eyes on the target, but there's nothing he can do when Unfix is dipping, diving, ducking and dodging. Kenzie ends up shooting uh, Shadow in the back. 20 seconds remaining. Someone's going to need to touch. This Torbjorn looks unreal. 
unrootable right now. Unfix has that rocket barrage in his back pocket for so long. Indeed, it looks unrootable, but someone's going to have to grab an axe and chop that tree down. And it looks like it may well have to be Dempsey who does that. He's got the pulse from in the back pocket. He's got five seconds to play with, and he's got one last dream, Jaws. Oh, 45% on that molten core. It's not going to be ready for it. Unfix has to get away from that self-destruct. It only finds the turret, but that might just be what they need. That additional DPS is not available there for him. A Valkyrie's going to get opened up by Young and Beautiful, and Ben Best is going to get revived, but Shadow is already dead. Unfix now, free to rule the skies. Saw like the eagle he truly is. He's trying to find Ben Best in the air, who did take out Main, so their main source of healing is gone. Dempsey finds the two-piece. One Gustav of them being the, the turret, but Gustav actually pistols him in the air. Unfix is going to go down, but it's only him left on the point. Overtime ticks through, and CIS hope get a full hold. Zero percentage gain and a celebratory firework from Kenzie. Nice little scream there from the Tracer. Uh, an explosive performance is something that I like to say a lot when it comes to his post songs, and that was certainly one of them. Kenzie, he was really free, free to do as he wished with that extra armor, really giving you a bit more confidence as a Tracer, 225 HP. You're a pretty beefy target, considering how small your hitbox is and how hard it is to take you out with the small arms fire of the opposing Tracer. But now, Young and Beautiful, their best case scenario here is a draw. They can't afford to give up a single tick, Jaws. This is a tall order, in all honesty, from Young and Beautiful, because <laughs> they don't really have a Torb specialist like Aang is. I mean, when I play Torb, I'm not going to lie, I'm thinking of padding stacks every time I throw out the <laughs> armor, pallet, armor packs. And the thing is, as well... Armor pack accuracy, man. Exactly. You've got, to keep, you've got to keep it up. You've got to go for the long shots the straight across the map. Yeah, exactly. And you, if you if you just litter them all over the point as well, that's a lot of like regeneration armor. So it's not and healing. It's kind of pseudo-healing, because if Kendi takes damage, the armor disappears, walks straight on top of them, he gets another bit of HP. The enemy also can't see them, so you can hit them with some sort of like uh, unexpected healing. Usually when you're playing around a health pack, the enemy knows where it is, they can dart in and try and take it first, maybe get body blocks, ward you away from it. But when it comes to the armor, they can't see it straight away. It's like, oh, okay, that guy's got 75 armor <laughs> bit, of ex bit of extra HP for some reason now, and exactly. That's, that's also incredibly effective against for Winston as well. It halves his DPS to 30. And when you're uh, when you're trying to do damage to targets uh, as a Winston and they've got armor, you will feel incredibly useless. Yeah, <laughs> and Ben Best did kind of feel that. You could kind of see CIS Hope, their ability to play around these Winston dives. You more often than not actually see Chow just push him off the edge, make sure he doesn't have bubble or jump, because you're going to use it to actually go for the engage to get a bit of extra protection. And then he's down there waiting for his cooldowns back. And Emil is then having to pick up that slack up there, just try and just force him off the high ground. It just was of no avail. Well, when it comes to searching for avail, CIS Hope looking to try and close this one out unfixed. He's coming out on the far. He wants to win an aerial duel, but Shadow's going to be waiting to greet him. A damage-boosted shot. Soldier laying down those damage-boosted shots. They're going to jump straight on the high ground and dislodge them instantly. Unfix takes a lot of damage from the front, but now look, they've got the advantage in the skies. They have to peek around this corner straight into Unfix rockets to get any damage to him. I say that. Emil's in his back line, and Ben Beth gives him the uppercut from the ground, and he ends up falling anyway. Shadow takes out Chow and his mech. Clean wipe for Young and Beautiful. That's a very quick reset for CIS Hope. A bit of vengeance there from Ben Best. He wants it to be the aerial superiority this time. Unfix, not deterred, though. He's not going to make the swap himself and main, but 36% apiece on their ultimates. Not much gain there for CIS Hope. They didn't really do much damage. Sharik was taken down first, and then the rest of CIS Hope found themselves with very little space as Young and Beautiful collapsed on top of them. And Young and Beautiful, they were very good there to make sure that they gave a little bit of space, and Sharik's down again already. He's already dead. Unfix is going to be able to get the dislodge on Shadow, but he's got tactical visor. If they play on the point, they're basically doomed. They're going to have to make a quick, quick retreat. Oh, that was close. A late pick onto Ding there would have been absolutely atrocious, but Ben Best just about squeaking away with his life, and he is now going to be able to feed a bit of healing to Ding. He wants to make sure Gustav doesn't get that healing. He's already got the Valkyrie ultimate they need to build up towards this transcendence. But speaking of building, Unfix has built himself House of Justice, and he's ready to lay it down on whoever, on whatever unfortunate soul is in range. Shadow's taking a lot of damage, but it's a good work as well. Main's actually going to go down. He instantly gets deleted by Shadow. Even uh, even Sharon gets liquefied by Ding's orbs. Those orbs of disruption not doing all too much work. Remember, they still have to get a tick. Two minutes still on the clock. This could be our... I don't want to call it now, but this could be our second draw. We're going to see in contenders. We've only had one thus far, and it was on the first week. Well, hold your horses, Jaws, because Serious Hope are yet to invest an ultimate. Young and Beautiful have, of course, used one of theirs. The tactical visor was deployed in that fight, but they've got five more waiting. This may well be an ultimate showdown coming up soon. CIS hope they're on the cusp of having six. Young and Beautiful sitting on five. 
It's going to be all in on the next fight, I imagine. There is the Valkyrie from both teams. Valkyrie from main, Valkyrie from Gustav. Unfix still looking for a way in to get that rocket barrage down. That's a lot of extra damage boosted as well on the side of Young and Beautiful as they do enter the site. However, big self-destruct does take out Gempsey in the end. They are still contesting about halfway to it. They need to be able to touch the point. Another self-destruct kill. A big justice reigns on top of the meal, but the bubble is blocking most of that as well. Then best perfectly timed bubble. Is it going to be enough for them to finish this game? off. Unfix finds the kill onto Emil's mech. Kenzie's going to be there for the cleanup, cleaning up the scraps of Shatter as well as he does jump on the point. Ding's going to have to touch, but it was too little, too late. And CIS Hope will claim a match point in this series. A little bit scary to have CIS Hope rebuffed quite consistently for about 2 minutes and 30 seconds before they came in and like, okay, enough nonsense. But, like you pointed out during that fight, Ben Best bubble usage against the barrage, very good. Emil also coming in with a defense matrix, making sure uh, not too much damage was done in the like half a second before Ben Best could deploy that. Yeah, that's something about the tanks from Young and Beautiful. It really does show so much prowess and target coordination as well. Emil coming onto the roster for Young and Beautiful was just such a bolster to their front line and their dive potential, which, again, Shadow adds to that whole new wave of um, wave of play. Young and Beautiful really do look like a revitalized team. And uh, with these two in additional on the rosters, it was going to be a hard game and an upward struggle at that. But CIS Hope, you know, they are winning out these small duels in the end. Yeah, they are winning out just on the micro play. However, Young and Beautiful, as you said they're looking very much alive i want to see if they can bring it back in the second half yeah we'll have to be back for a break <laughs> i missed the line up there we'll be back after this small break we'll be back with the analysts that can break down games one and two a little bit more